The resignation of a prominent member of the School of Music earlier this semester led to many questions by the tech community, and we're now getting answers in the form of an official report. Coming up, we'll have details regarding the Title IX investigation of Dwayne Hill. And local small businesses and groups took over the McKenzie Market Alumni Center this week for a special event. Find out more about Tech Small Business Expo next. And the Texas Tech women's tennis team is making big news after finishing out another successful season in conference play. We'll let you know which Lady Raiders are headed on to compete for a national title in sports. This is the MCTV Weekday Update. Welcome to the Thursday edition of the MCTV Weekday Update. I'm Nick Hay. And I'm Brandon Medina. Earlier this semester, the School of Music made a sudden announcement that going band director Dwayne Hill had decided to resign from his position with the School of Music. That's right, Brandon. March 19th statement was sent via email to members of the band, and his resignation was official as of March 30th. Since then, rumors have spread regarding Hill's resignation, and we now have official details regarding the situation. Earlier this week, Texas Tech University released a report detailing a Title IX investigation into former associate director of bands Dwayne Hill. The report, compiled by the Office of Equal Opportunity and the Title IX administration, contains information regarding Hill's inappropriate interactions with students over the last four years. During the investigation, 37 students were interviewed regarding their interactions with Hill. Those interviews included statements regarding inappropriate social media messages sent to students by Hill, including some messages that included sexual content and imagery. According to the report, Hill specifically targeted male members of the going band with his messages, and many of the interactions were unsolicited by the students. The interviewees also stated that most messages from Hill were received between 11 p.m. and 4 a.m., and that alone made the students question Hill's intent even if the messages did not contain explicit content. Based on the dates given in the Title IX document, some students reported interaction with Hill as far back as 2014, and two anonymous complaints were filed in 2016. But prior to the recent investigation, Hill had denied the accusations and no further action was taken. In the finalized report, the university found that Hill violated four of Tech's operating policies, sexual harassment, sexual assault, sexual misconduct, and Title IX policy and complaint procedures. Conflict of interest and commitment policy, faculty, staff, and student conflict of interest, and promotion and tenure standards and procedures. Once the investigators contacted Hill regarding these violations, Hill admitted to the interactions with students, which eventually led to his resignation in March. Although Title IX reports establish details that could lead to legal action, the report itself is not meant to reprimand the parties involved. Since Hill has left Texas Tech, no further action by the university is expected at this time. However, students involved in the investigation could press charges on any interaction with Hill that could be considered illegal. In other news, the Texas Tech Department welcomed the local business community to campus to celebrate National Small Business Week. Tech's Procurement Service hosted the annual Small Business Expo in the McKenzie Market Alumni Center on Tuesday. From 8 a.m. to noon, business owners, entrepreneurs, government agents, and more all came together to network and exchange information. The event featured an area for various local businesses and groups to set up a booth and spread the word about their operation. The event also featured presentations to help business owners and potential owners learn more about opportunities for small and disadvantaged businesses. This year's expo was organized with a Hollywood theme and several vendors dressed up in costumes or formal wear for the event. Tuesday's event also featured door prizes and plenty of swag and it was free and open to the public. Dancers from the School of Theater and Dance are preparing for their biggest show of the year. Dance Tech is performing a show entitled Choreo Realities. The performance explores the intersection of truth, hope, peace, fear, and aggression. Yesterday, our Katie Main caught up with three of the performers to learn about the story behind each dance. This piece addresses sexual harassment and the political climate that we have seen recently. Um, it's an excerpt, well it includes excerpts from Anita Afield's speech or her statement. This is a really awesome piece because it's about the female archetypes and so in the piece we have different um, stereotypes of women and um, we go through movie clips of um, each and then at the end it's sort of like a saying no to all of those things and showing that women can be more than that. Another piece we are doing is called And She Lived. It's by Kyla Olson and um, it's kind of exploring. She started off with Sweet Charity, the movie, the musical, and kind of exploring how women are expected to get married and be mothers and how she feels about that and then we also had a, a lot of discussions about how us as dancers who are all women feel about it as well. And we kind of just went from there and kind of showing 
the stereotypical housewives and then the other side of that, women who are seen as harlots and then how we kind of mesh those and become our own women who don't necessarily fit into those molds. This weekend's performance invites viewers to experience differing choreographic explorations inspired by current issues in Western cultures and American politics. The dance tech performances kick off tonight with a performance at 7.30 p.m. The remaining performances are on Friday and Saturday at 7.30 p.m. If you're interested in attending the show, visit the School of Visual and Performing Arts website located on your screen. If ceramics and clay are more your style of artistic expression, one campus department has a special opportunity just for you. The School of Arts Ceramic Department is hosting a ceramic art spring sale. The sale is taking place today and tomorrow. Today's display was set up in the foyer of the School of Art between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. And the items for sale will be set up again tomorrow at the First Friday Art Trail. Tomorrow's sale will take place from 6 to 9 p.m. in the Charles Adams Studio. Proceeds from this week's sales will benefit students in the College of Art. Over the last week, a few storm systems have moved through the South Plains, creating some unusually muggy weather for students heading to class. Yeah, Nick, yesterday morning sure didn't feel a lot like Lubbock, with temperatures starting out in the 70s and humidity levels near 90%. Since then, it's been a lot drier and highs nearly reached 90 degrees yesterday. So can we expect any more muggy conditions in the near future? Let's take a look at the MCTV forecast. It's been a pretty nice day so far on the Tech Campus. The MCTV tower cam is showing lots of sunshine, and at the moment, Winds are a little breezy, temperatures have been climbing since sunrise, and we should reach the low 80s by this afternoon. But also this afternoon, we'll see an increase in winds and clouds. After sunset, temperatures will fall into the low 50s and the winds will die down slightly. Tomorrow, we can expect another day of sunny skies and warm temperatures. Highs are forecast to reach the upper 70s tomorrow afternoon and we'll see more breezy conditions throughout the day. Overnight, skies will remain clear and temperatures will again drop into the low 50s. On Saturday, we can expect a full beautiful day here in Lubbock with sunny skies, light winds, and highs in the mid-80s. Saturday night will also be a great evening with mild temperatures and continuation of clear skies. Lows on Saturday should only fall into the mid-50s. On Sunday, the weekend will continue with another day of sunny conditions and warm weather. Temperatures are forecast to climb just below 90 degrees and winds will be slightly breezy. On Sunday night, we'll see a slight increase in the cloud cover and lows again will be in the 50s. On Monday, the last week of classes will kick off with even warmer temperatures and more wind. Skies should be mostly sunny during the day and highs will top out in the low 90s. Monday night will continue the trend of mild evenings with lows only dropping to 60 degrees. The breezy conditions will also continue throughout the night. On Tuesday, the final day of class will start out with gloomy conditions and a strong breeze, but te temperatures will climb into the afternoon and we should see another high around 90 before sunset. Overnight, clouds will begin to clear out, but wind speeds will increase to as high as 30 miles per hour. Lows on Wednesday will again be in the low 60s and there's a slight chance of thunderstorms before midnight. On dead day, we should see a return of the sun and another day of temperatures above 90 degrees. Winds will be breezy, but overall it should be a pretty nice day. After sunset, we'll see more clouds return to the area, but lows will again be mild, dropping back into the 60s. Looking ahead, lots of sunshine and more 90 degree weather will stick around to end the week. The number 11 ranked Lady Raiders tennis team received some big news this week. Not only did the team finish out Big 12 play in the top 25 of the nation, but several members are headed to the NCAA Division I championships. Senior Gabriela Talaba and junior Felicity Maltby will be competing in the singles competition, and seniors Sabrina Federici and Sarah Dvorak qualified for the doubles competition. All four players were selected after the Lady Raiders made it to the Big 12 championship match this past Saturday. Unfortunately, the ki they came up short in that match 1-4. to four. Next weekend, the team will also be hosting the first and second rounds of the NCAA team tournament here on campus at McLeod Tennis Center. Tech will face Army in the first round on Friday, May 11th at 1 p.m. If the Lady Raiders advance, they will compete in the second round on Saturday, May 12th. The Texas Tech baseball team is also gearing up for some big action as the team prepares to take on the Texas Longhorns this weekend. UT will be headed to town for this year's three-game series at Dan Law Field. The Longhorns are sitting in second place in the conference, and Tech is holding on to third place, only one game back. If Tech is able to sweep the Longhorns, they have a decent chance of taking over first place from the Oklahoma State Cowboys, who they will face in two weeks. Start times for this weekend's series are at 6.30 p.m. on Friday, 1 p.m. on Saturday, and 2 p.m. on Sunday. All three games are sold out, but you can still get in for free with your Tech ID. So, Brandon, I hear this is your last MCTV news update. It absolutely is, man. It's, uh, it's been a long time coming, three years of great memories and great friends like yourself, and I would not want to end it with anybody else but my man, Nick Hay. 
I completely agree. You've been a good person to me the whole way through, and I really appreciate it. Thank you, my man. That's all for today's edition of MTTV Weekday Update. Thanks so much for joining us, and be sure to check out ttuhub.net every day for more news. We'll see you next week.